carried. We come now to item number 10, which is the preparation of the draft Auckland Council annual report and the draft Auckland Council summary annual report. Um, this is, of course, an item that will be dealt with uh, under confidential, under items C1 and C2. And the reason for that is, of course, um, we need, first of all, to release those results uh, to the New Zealand Stock Exchange. Uh, and we have legal commitments to keep the content, uh, insofar as that, that content uh, is confidential and not part of uh, uh, earlier discussions, um, uh, to ourselves until such time as uh, the New Zealand uh, Stock Exchange has received that, which will be tomorrow. Um, I welcome to the table Francis Caetano, Tracy Gears, and Karuna Daya. Um, thank you for the work that you've done. Um, just signed off those letters of representation this morning to the Auditor General. Um, and uh, we probably won't have an extended discussion at this point, but Francis, is there any preliminary comment that you'd like to make at this point? Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, through you. Um, this report just discusses the process that we followed in preparing the annual report and the summary annual report and confirms the approvals that we received from both the Audit and Risk Committee and the Finance and Performance Committee and those minutes are attached to the report. Um, at the time of writing the report, uh, there was one outstanding audit matter relating to the audit of Auckland Council's Scope 1 and Scope 2 greenhouse gas emissions performance measures. This has now been cleared, and therefore there are no significant outstanding audit or process issues relating to the audit report, annual reports. Um, as His Worship mentioned, there we'll be uh, discussing the approval of the annual report and summary annual report in confidential, and the Deputy Auditor General will also be addressing the meeting in, in the confidential. Um, I'll take the, the rest of the report as read and happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much for that, Francis. Um, I will check if there are any questions. Most of you will probably reserve your questions to confidential. Uh, Councillor? Oh, yeah, no. Um, I, I, I've had a request from Councillor Simpson to move, uh, Councillor Daniel Newman to second, um, and happy for that to be the case. And a question from uh, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Francis, and seeing as you brought the, um, the climate emissions piece up in this open section, um, I, it's my understanding that Auckland Council is the only um, metropolitan area or any form of council is actually doing these counts at this, this stage. Is there going to be a necessity, in your opinion, for a nationwide system for accountability for emissions reduction targets and delivering and accounting for this? Um, through you, uh, Your Worship, the... Um all uh, councils that have debt listed on the stock exchange will be required to prepare a um, climate change statement. That will be it's in legislation. The external reporting board are currently um, busy uh, preparing those standards, uh, which will include an audit of the greenhouse gases. And that's currently been uh, exposed, and we have provided a written submission on that to the XRB. Um, and once that comes in from the 1st of July 2023, uh, that will be mandatory. So we've started uh, a number of years ago, and our volume four is our thing. So we, we were the first to start, but the other councils are having to do catch up very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't received any other requests for questions, so we'll move to comments. Uh, thank our officials for, for, for their attendance. Are there any comments? Uh, Councillor Desley Simpson. I just want to add um, my thanks to you and your team, Francis. Great work, and I especially around the um, emissions uh, audit requirement. Um, that only came to you in August. Uh, I don't have to remind anybody that it's only September. So I know that it was flagged at finance and performance that that was quite difficult to put together. Um, you've done it, and that's a huge credit to you and the team. And the team, yeah, all of you. So thank you very much. 
well done. And to have a clean audit to go through is just fantastic. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, and if I can just... One more comment, if I may. Yes, certainly. <clears throat> In public, I hope the media, when it is released, uh, talk long and hard about the fantastic results. That's all I'll say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> No, no pressure to the representatives that are in the room at the present time. Um, look, if I can add to those comments, Francis, for you and the team, uh, thank you very much. Uh, in the same way as I mentioned under the last item, um, it is critically important that there can be confidence uh, that we have managed our finances uh, in a prudent and sustainable way. Uh, and we've certainly done that. And yet again, that will be confirmed, as you have indicated, uh, in an unmodified opinion from the Auditor-General, uh, which indicates that uh, there were not issues of concern, or as the, aud the Deputy Auditor said to me this morning, there are no black marks against the Council, uh, and, and that's refreshing uh, to know. Um, just while we're in public se se session, um, without disclosing anything that is confidential, um, everybody knows that this has been a particularly tough uh, year financially with the ongoing impact of COVID. And I want to acknowledge both uh, our professional staff but also councillors for getting council through a period of those unprecedented challenges. We've never been through an event where we've been robbed of a uh, billion dollars in revenue uh, by something outside our control like a global pandemic. Uh, we've come through not only with managing our finances, but also with maintaining the services that are critical to the people of our city, continuing the progress on building the infrastructure. And I will just mention uh, yesterday, uh, we, for any councillor that hasn't been down to, to Komititanga Square, um, you will see the Chief Post Office building in all its glory, minus its scaffolding, minus its plastic. And I stood there as we officially marked the reopening uh, of the building and looked around at the Komititanga Square, looked across at the Harbourside Park, looked down to where the new ferry terminal is, looked at Key Street that was once under huge criticism for orange cones and is now looking absolutely beautiful, looked up at uh, Queen Street which is no longer congested with traffic. And we can be proud, I think, as a council uh, of, of what we've achieved at a particularly difficult time. And to that I add, even while we've dealt with those financial pressures, we've been able to make progress on things like climate change because of the Climate Action Plan and the Climate Action Targeted Rate. So uh, without apology, I can say this, uh, this report backs up the way in which this council has been both managed, Jim, and governed, and that is something that everybody uh, can justly be proud of. And you don't get off thanked often enough, and I'm thanking everybody around this table now, and, and also for all of our staff uh, for a job well done, as, as demonstrated in that annual report. So with that, um, it's been moved uh, and seconded. Uh, I will put the, uh, the resolution. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 I waited. I was a bit too fast. Uh, to the contrary, no, uh, I declare that carried um, without dissent, I think. So we come now um, to uh, item number 11 on the, uh, the agenda, the process for making external member appointments to the Audit and Risk Committee. Uh, and 